In the name of Allah, the one, the conqueror. And may Allah send his prayers and blessings upon Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, the Imams and the Mahdi's. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, and mention, O Muhammad, when we took from the prophets their covenant and from you and from Noah and from Abraham and Moses and Jesus, the son of Mary, and we took from them a solemn covenant. And so here we see in the Quran that God specifically mentioned that he established a covenant with Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad those five prophets. And there was an initial covenant he made with Adam as well, but Adam broke it. The Quran states, we had already beforehand taken the covenant of Adam, but he forgot, and we found on his part no firm resolve. So in total, the covenants established between man and God were six, and all six of those covenants were broken. The Muhammadan covenant being broken with the Muslim nation imprisoning and murdering the family of the Prophet Muhammad and instead pledging allegiance to tyrants and false rulers whom were not appointed by God. It has been written and foretold that at a time when Islam is lost and the Quran is lifted and the mosques are empty of guidance, at a time where the truthful is belied and the liar is believed, the Mahdi will appear. And the Mahdi has appeared in order to invite people to a final covenant with God. And the Quran said, we never punish until we have sent a messenger. And I am that messenger. I am a messenger to the Muslims from Imam al-Mahdi salam, and from Ahmad al-Hassan the Yamani salam. I am a messenger to the Christians from Jesus, the son of Mary. And I am a messenger to the Jews from Elijah. I am inviting you to the seventh and final covenant between God and mankind. Accepting this covenant is the only thing that will save you from the punishment which is about to come down upon mankind. COVID was merely the beginning of that punishment and a precursor. More plagues and diseases will be unearthed and unleashed upon you. Viruses that were frozen and dormant for thousands of years will become live once again. Strange illnesses that were never seen before will fall down to the earth with comets and meteors. Sicknesses that are worse than the Black Death will sweep the globe. Wars will cover the entire globe until no man, woman, or child feels safe. The sounds of jets soaring through the skies, bombs exploding on the earth and sea, and the cries of human beings will haunt the human mind. The earth will turn on mankind and its oceans and seas will seek to strike their cities. And the earth will shake down every tall building, and the skies will darken, and smoke will cover it, and the planet will seek to destroy mankind just as the immune system seeks to destroy an infection. Prices will soar, and the most valuable of things will be those things needed to survive, such as bread and water. Neighbors will kill neighbors, and people will eat people out of hunger. Chaos will erupt, and destruction of civilization will occur. The beasts of the earth will turn against man and the insects, and the beasts of the sky and the earth will chase and hunt down mankind just as they hunted them. 
Even the sun and the moon and the stars and the heavenly bodies will curse the inhabitants of the earth. And time itself is and will speed up even more in order to fast forward this time where much evil abides on the face of the earth. The reason for all of this is because mankind chose to reject God. The Israelites once did the same. In the Torah, it states, So all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, You are old, and your sons do not follow your ways. Now appoint a king to lead us, such as all other nations have. But when they said, Give us a king to lead us, This displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord told him, Listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you that they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. As they have done from the day I brought them out of Egypt until this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so they are doing to you. Now listen to them, but warn them solemnly, and let them know what the king who will reign over them will claim as his rights. Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, This is what the king who will reign over you will claim as his rights. He will take your sons and make them serve with his chariots and horses, and they will run in front of his chariots. Some he will assign to be commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, and others to plow his ground and reap his harvest, and still others to make weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive groves and give them to his attendants. He will take a tenth of your grain and of your vintage and give it to his officials and attendants. Your male and female servants and the best of your cattle and donkeys he will take for his own use. He will take a tenth of your flocks and you yourselves will become his slaves. When the day comes, you will cry out for relief from the king you have chosen, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. When that day comes, you will cry out for relief from the king you have chosen, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we want a king over us. Then we will be like all the other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us and fight our battles. When Samuel heard all that the people said, he repeated it before the Lord. The Lord answered and said, Listen to them and give them a king. And the Prophet Muhammad he said, You shall follow the steps of the Jews and the Christians, step by step, so much so that if they fall into the lizard's hole, you would do the same. And you have. And now, after 1400 years, of suffering under tyrannical kings, after rejecting God and after breaking the covenant with him, God is granting you a chance to enter into a new covenant with him. This opportunity is open to all of the people of the earth. It is a covenant not with a person like he did with Adam, nor a covenant with a particular family like he had with the family of Noah and the family of Abraham but a covenant with the righteous souls of all the nations, a covenant in which righteous souls from all the different nations of the earth can come together to form God's chosen people in this day and age, a people whom take God as their king and their leader, and a God who in turn sees those people as worthy to take as his people, a people who God will favor above all people, and a people who will inherit the earth, a people who will be one body, 
and who will love their brother and their sister more than they love their own self. A people who reject man-made laws and rules and who uphold only the laws and the rule of God. And the invitation to a new covenant by the Mahdi is not something new, for it was mentioned in the narrations of the Ahl-Bayt that the Mahdi will invite to a new matter and will bring forward a new book and a new jurisprudence, which will be heavy upon the Arabs. This new covenant is not a new religion, as it is a continuation of the religion that God gave Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, but it is a restoration and a renewal of religion appropriate for the time in which we live, abrogating and nullifying much of the old jurisprudence and implementing a new one. Abu Abdullah said, the saying of God, so be patient as the determined ones were. So he said, they are Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. I said, how did they become Ulil Azm? How did they become from the ones with foremost determination? He said, because Noah was sent with a book and a jurisprudence. So all those who came after Noah worked by the book of Noah and his jurisprudence and his method until Abraham came with the scriptures. And with willpower, he left the book of Noah, not out of disbelief in it. And every prophet who came after Abraham came forward with the jurisprudence of Abraham, his method and his scriptures until Moses came with the Torah. And with willpower, he left the scriptures. And so every prophet who came after Moses worked by the Torah, his jurisprudence and his method until the Messiah came with the Gospels. And with willpower, Jesus left to the jurisprudence of Moses and his method. And so every prophet who came after the Messiah worked by his jurisprudence and by his method until Muhammad came and brought forward the Quran, his jurisprudence and his method. So his halal will remain halal, his permissible will remain permissible, and his haram, his impermissible, will remain impermissible until the day of the Qiyamah. So these are the ulil azm, those with the foremost determination from the messengers. And this is the day of the Qiyamah, and the day of the Qa'im. And I have the willpower to leave the book of Muhammad, not out of disbelief in it, and the jurisprudence of Muhammad that the people know about, and I have the willpower to give life to the Muhammadan jurisprudence and book that the people don't know about. That the people don't know about and that the people rejected when they rejected Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, and Al Hassan and Al Hussein, when they rejected Zain al Abidin and Muhammad al Bakr, Ja'far al Sadiq and Musa al Qasim, Ali al Rida and Muhammad al Jawad, Ali al Hadi and Al Hassan al Askari, السلام, when they rejected Muhammad ibn al Hassan, the Mahdi, and Ahmad al Hassan. السلام, Adam was given everything that grew from the ground to eat, but Noah was given meat to eat. And Abraham was given circumcision as part of his new jurisprudence. Never was it part of those who came before. And Moses was given the Ten Commandments, which differed completely from what was given to Abraham. And Jesus made it forbidden for a man to marry more than one wife and forbidden to divorce. And Muhammad sallallahu completely changed the direction of the prayer from Jerusalem to Mecca. The one who carries the jurisprudence is above the jurisprudence, and the jurisprudence is not above him, as Jesus made clear. He said, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, 
so the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. And as such, I say, religion and the entire jurisprudence was made for man, and not man for religion nor for jurisprudence. And so the Son of Man is Lord even of religion, and he is the implementer of the jurisprudence, and he is the halal, and he is the haram. In the Seventh Covenant's jurisprudence, the declaration of faith is, there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and Ali and the Imams from his sons are the proofs of Allah, and the Mahdi and the Mahdis are the proofs of Allah. The prayer in the Seventh Covenant is submission and prostration of the heart and the body to the divinely appointed leader of every age. And mentioned when we said to the angels, prostrate before Adam. So they prostrated, except for Iblis. He refused and was arrogant and became of the disbelievers. And prostration means obedience. This is the true prayer. And this is why the family of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, we are the prayers. Imam Mahdi, Muhammad ibn Hassan alayhi salam, is the Fajr prayer, who comes at the end of the dark night, right before the dawn. Whoever is obedient to him and pledges allegiance to him and submits to him has prayed Fajr. Imam Ahmad al-Hassan alayhi salam, is the Dhuhr prayer, the Yamani of the family of Muhammad Whoever goes against him is from the people of the fire, who comes at the middle of the bright day, and his rule is the brightest of all. Whoever is obedient to him and pledges allegiance to him and submits to him has prayed the Dhuhr prayer. And I am the Asr prayer, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, guard your obligatory prayers, especially the middle prayer. Rise, my brothers and sisters. As for the zakat, as for the zakat in this covenant, paying 10 pounds once a year to the poor is hardly fulfilling the duty as a human being, let alone a Muslim. Zakat is to take only your need of this world and to give your brother and your sister whatever they need before you take yours. That is the true charity, the true zakat to distribute wealth amongst all until there is no poor person to give and until there is not a single beggar on the face of this earth. To ensure the feeding and education and housing of all human beings, just as you do for your own self and your own family. As for the true Ramadan, it is to abstain from all sexual pleasures and from all fruits and meats during the entire month and only eat one humble meal a day made from only two items such as bread and cheese or rice and beans. And the month of Ramadan is in the month of December every year. Ramadan for the Muslims today is nothing more than a month where the Muslims sleep all day and stay up all night eating and drinking and smoking away. It is the month where the Muslims waste the most food and watch the most TV and the month where the most sins are committed. As for the pilgrimage, it is to the divinely appointed ruler by Allah. That is the house of Allah that houses the spirit of Allah. If the spirit of Allah could be housed in the temple of Solomon, or in the bush that spoke to Moses, or in the Kaaba, 
then the human being is far greater of a creation than those houses of stone. The human heart is a greater throne for the spirit of Allah to sit upon. And that is the house of Allah. The seventh covenant that God is calling you towards is a covenant that God is taking upon mankind to support him to rule through the person whom he blew his spirit into, just as he blew it into Adam before. A covenant to establish God's rule on earth as it is in heaven above, through obedience and submission to his spirit in every age. A covenant that reminds us that ever since God blew his spirit into Adam, he never left us. His spirit always remained amongst us here on earth. Adam dies, but God lives, for his spirit moves on to Seth. Noah dies, but God lives, for the spirit of God that was in Noah moved on to Shem. Abraham dies, but God lives, for the spirit of God that was with Abraham moved on to Isaac. Moses dies, but God lives for the Spirit of God that rested with Moses moved on to Joshua. Jesus dies, but God lives for the Spirit of God that was in Jesus moved on to Peter. Muhammad dies, but God lives for the Spirit of God that was in Muhammad moved on to Ali. A covenant that teaches us that salvation lies in the belief in and obedience to and support of the Spirit of God. And that is the supremacy and the rulership of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The worship of that Spirit through obedience and prostration to the house in which it resides in every day and age is the true religion and is true monotheism. To worship the Holy Spirit that was blown into Adam through obedience and prostration towards Adam without worshiping Adam the flesh and blood. Obedience and prostration towards Jesus without worshiping Jesus the flesh and blood. Obedience and prostration towards Muhammad without worshiping Muhammad the flesh and blood. That is then worship of God. The seventh covenant is a covenant of freedom, where we return to the pure religion and strip our minds of all of the falsehood and cleanse and free ourselves of all of the false beliefs and ideas that we were taught growing up. The Israelites before made much of the halal haram and placed on their own selves bonds and chains because of their following of the non-working scholars. The Qur'an said all food was lawful to the children of Israel except what Israel had made unlawful to himself before the Torah was revealed. A covenant with God that frees us from the worship of Satan. For God says in the Qur'an, Did I not enjoin upon you, O children of Adam, that you not worship Satan? For indeed he is to you a clear enemy. The Spirit of God in every age is the distinguisher between those who worship God and those who worship Satan. Those who worship God are those who listen to God, and those who worship Satan are those who listen to Satan. And those who listen to God are the children of God, and those who listen to Satan are the children of Satan. Jesus said to the Jews who persecuted him, if you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do what Abraham did. As it is, you are looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the works of your own father. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me, for I have come here from God. I have not come from my own. God sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning 
not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. Anyone who listens to me and welcomes me has truly been awaiting the Mahdi and their father is Adam alayhi salam. And anyone who rejects me hates the Mahdi and their father is Iblis, Nanatullah alayhi. Every single hour that passes by, every hour of every day, more than 700 children die in that very hour because of poverty. 6.2 million children under the age of 15 die yearly because of poverty. Meanwhile, every year, hundreds of millions of tons of food is wasted by the food industry, grocery stores, restaurants, and food retailers. They would rather selfishly waste it instead of hand it over to the poor so that it doesn't affect their profits and it doesn't affect their taxes. The fashion industry burns and destroys 92 million tons worth of clothing every year. They would rather selfishly waste it instead of hand it to the poor so that it doesn't affect their profits and it doesn't affect their taxes. Hundreds of millions are homeless, and hundreds of thousands of people die because of homelessness every single year. Yet there are 42 million homes around the world that are vacant, according to official records, and in reality, there are much more. How incredibly evil is that? How satanic is that? Human beings lying and dying on the streets Children dying, suffering in the cold while governments leave people on the streets homeless and the rich collect houses while the poor suffer. Those houses that the rich own do not belong to them. That is what Jesus, Muhammad, that is what Moses, Buddha, Krishna and all of the prophets would have said. The vacant, house, the vacant houses belong to the homeless. That is the will of God. The ones who have above their need owe oh, the ones who do not meet their need. Evil is not in abandoning prayer. Evil is in abandoning the poor. Evil is praying to a God while poverty exists while doing nothing about it. Prayer is housing the homeless and feeding the hungry. And prayer is saving lives. That is the entirety of religion. Fasting is abstaining from anything above your needs so your brother and sister may have. What multi-million dollar mosque is God pleased with while the poor are without heat? Woe to you, O human beings, the greatest of punishments approach. And the greatest of punishments are the poor. They will eat the rich and take their homes and swallow them whole for all the lives lost and all the lives wasted and all of the suffering which they saw that was unnecessary. All the world needed was a divinely appointed man from God who has his spirit who would divide the earth equally and properly in order that suffering is alleviated for all mankind.
What have I come calling you towards except for the truth and except for justice? I am the voice of the poor and the sinful. I preach a message of glad tidings for them that they are about to inherit the earth. I preach to them saying, O sinful ones, accept this covenant and pledge allegiance to God and your sins will be forgiven and erased and returned on those who caused you to sin, your oppressors, the leaders appointed by Satan and his children. I have not come except for the remorseful sinners. I have come for the thief who had to steal because of poverty, the prostitute who had to sell herself in order that her kids may eat, for the drug dealers who had no other choice in life. I have come for the broken man and the broken woman, those who were cheated out of life. I am the sword that they waited for, which is aimed at those who stole their fortunes. I'm the savior of the poor, and I have not come except for the beggars and those without. I come for the hungry and those who slept without. I come for the homeless and those left in the cold. I come for the widows and for the orphans. I come for the refugees and for the oppressed. I come for the confused and those who almost lost hope. I come for all those lost children of God. I come to say to you, your father is here. Jesus, peace be upon him, said, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter into the kingdom of God. But I tell you, it will be easier for that same rich man to enter into the kingdom of God than it will be for him to enter into our divine just state when it comes on the earth. I am inviting all free human beings who are dissatisfied with the way the world is to join us hand in hand and to pledge allegiance to this call and to give everything that they have till the last breath. Give it to God in order to support this great movement. Imam Ali salam, one day he struck his hands together and said, if the Muslim nation would have followed me and obeyed me after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi until now, they would have been eating from above them and from under their feet, and they would have had enough food to eat until the day of the Qiyamah. And I say unto you, my beloved brothers and sisters, if you follow me and obey me, I will make you the greatest of nations and the richest of them and the most prosperous, and you will go out to feed the poor, but you will find none. And you will go out to clothe those who are cold, and you will find none. And you will go out to house the homeless, and you will find none. <laughs>